Testing, testing, one, two, three. Sega, a company we of course have covered a lot on here, who have clearly made a huge impact on gaming history. The Sega Mega Drive, or Genesis as it was known in North America, is one of the most important consoles of all time, being the first home console system to overtake a Nintendo system in hardware sales. Its predecessor on the other hand, the Sega Master System, while not selling very well in either Japan or the United States, would still prove popular elsewhere, particularly in Australia, Europe and Brazil. Whilst most people are familiar with both the Sega Master System and Sega Master System 2, what fewer people will be familiar with would be the models of the 8-bit hardware that would come in later years, with there being a Master System 3 released, and much more. So in today's video we are going to cover this lesser known segment of Sega's gaming tale. I am Lady Decade and this is the story of the Sega Master System 3 and more. The family tree of Sega systems is a very complex one. Let us just take the 16-bit Sega Mega Drive for example. While many people would be able to point you towards the Sega Mega Drive 1 and 2 or even the Sega Mega CD and 32X with a deeper look, things quickly get a lot more complicated. I mean, we have the North American Genesis 3, the handheld Sega Mega Jet and Nomad, all in one cartridge slash CD units such as the Multi Mega, Wonder Mega and JVCXI and that is before we even get to all of the crazy official Mega Drives made over in Brazil, such as the Wii like Mega Drive 3 and the Mega Drive 4 that came with a guitar peripheral. It gets very silly very quickly, with there even being Mega Drive personal computers such as the Amstrad Mega PC and the Sega Terra Drive. Master System history is no less contrived, so let's take a trip through time and look at the confusing history of the many models of the Sega 8-bit hardware. As discussed on this channel before, the 8-bit journey starts off with the Sega SG-1000, released in 1983. This system, which featured very similar architecture to the ColecoVision, was produced at the demand of a Sega president, Hayao Nakayama, and saw release on the same day as the Nintendo Famicom. The first Sega home console never really proved popular anywhere, with its popularity being dwarfed by the Nintendo competition. An upgrade was needed so the SG-1000 Mark II was born, which to be honest was not much more than a system with a new case design, however the Mark III would end up having many more bells and whistles. The SG-1000 Mark III was not only more powerful than the SG-1000, but also offered more impressive graphics than even Nintendo's popular Famicom, with the Japanese console going on to see a release in a new casing of its own. This time being launched as the Master System, the classic console that featured a card slot. So SG-1000 Mark III for Japan and Sega Master System for everywhere else. Simple, right? Wrong. Back in Japan, to make matters a bit more confusing, the Mark III would be recased and marketed as the Sega Master System over there as well, meaning that in Japan you had the Sega Master System and SG-1000 Mark III on the market at the same time, even though they were both the same device. So by the time the Sega Master System 2 was released around the world, which we mentioned at the beginning of this video, it was technically, in fact, really Sega's fifth revision of their 8-bit console, rather than their second or even sixth. If you include that there was also the Sega SC3000 microcomputer, a budget home computer version of Sega's early 8-bit architecture. 
Whilst this family tree of 8-bit systems is not too complicated so far, as you will see from this video, things got sillier going forward. As explained earlier, it is safe to say that the Master System was somewhat of a failure in North America and Japan, but the system was a popular platform in Australia, Europe and South America. Out of all of these regions, the area whereby the Sega Master System would receive the longest, uh, well, um, longevity, would be Brazil, which is where the story of the Master System 3 will be taking us. I mean, it's weird Sega console history, where else are we going to go? In Brazil, the Master System 1 and 2 in the country were not the same two we would receive elsewhere. Oh no! Instead, the original design of the Sega Master System would be marketed twice over. The first time as the Sega Master System, and then later as the Master System 2, even though it was just the same console. The Master System 2 version of the Master System 1 in Brazil, as confusing as that sounds, was just a classic Master System paired with a light gun and 3D glasses. This packaging also came with Alex Kidd built into the system, much like some of the real Master System 2s elsewhere, or should we be calling them SG-1000 Mark Vs? Then again, the Sega Mega Drive was codenamed the Mark V in Japan before its release, so this gets more confusing by the minute. Silly Sega. Regarding Brazil, all models of the Master System were of course manufactured and sold by Tectoy, the Brazilian electronic company that we have mentioned a lot on here that had a licensing agreement with Sega. This deal was beneficial for both companies as it would mean to customers of the products that they would not have to pay the outrageous import taxes on consoles that the Brazilian government expected consumers to pay on foreign electronics. Tectoy made a great partner. They even made the Zebo, which still deserves a video on here. Next up for Tectoy was a system known as the Sega Master System 3 Compact. This would be released and sold by Tectoy in 1992, and as you can see this one is essentially the Master System 2 that we received in many other places around the world. The only difference being the name atop the system and the Tectoy logo being prominently displayed on the controller. I guess they had used the name Master System 2 already, so needed something else. The story of the Master System 3 Compact does not simply end here though. Variants of this system would continue to be sold throughout the entirety of the 90s and would come in with different built-in games and peripherals such as the light phaser gun. The original version of this system came with Alex Kidd, but others came with Sonic the Hedgehog, Super Football 2, Global Gladiators, Bart vs the World, and one version of the Master System 3 Compact even came with Sonic built in, along with other small titles produced by Tectoy themselves, collectively known as 20 in 1. All the choices! Exciting! Moving forward, Tectoy would release a device known as the Master System Super Compact. This outrageously quirky device, as you can see, in some ways was Tectoy's answer to the Sega Mega Jet. Or I guess a sort of Game Geary Mega Jet, bearing in mind that it was just 8 bit. These systems were smaller and more compact than all previous versions of the Master System and differ in that they can be powered via batteries as opposed to regular AC power supplies. Snazzy. It's hard to do this voiceover because I keep laughing. <laughs> The most surprising feature of these devices are that they featured built-in telecom packs, which allowed the broadcast of AV signals to nearby TVs that were tuned into channels 3 or 4, thus making this system completely wire-free. Pretty novel. 
As impressive as this feature sounds though, apparently the wireless feature is extremely susceptible to interference. So apparently if you have one, you are best connecting it to a TV via an RCA cable. Anyway, further to this, if you think Master System Super Compact is odd, this device has an even stranger variant known as the Master System Girl, which in all technicalities is exactly the same console, only this time it comes in pink. This at the time must have been a hugely progressive move as now for the first time in history girls would finally be able to play video games too i want one and i want one now next in the master system 3 story brazil would get a range of devices known as the master system 3 collections these consoles are traded in the black for a Super Nintendo Grey and featured different coloured lids depending on which year you procured the system. From what I can tell, the life cycle of the Master System 3 collections was marketed in the 2000s. These systems would ditch the two button Sega Master System controller for a six button Sega Mega Drive controller. You know, for all of those many 8-bit games that require such a layout. Not For some reason, these models of the system would come out with outrageously large selections of built-in games, offering as high an amount as 131 different titles. Most of these games were officially licensed Sega titles as well. However, bizarrely, Sonic Drift 2 for the Game Gear is also present. But the rest of the games were simply mobile games released by Tectoy, meaning the Master System lineage was a beginning to get rather strange. At the time the Master System 3 collection was on the market, Tectoy also released another device in 2004, known as the Master System Handy. This piece of hardware is literally a plug and play controller, featuring a console with a chip inside it. This device has 27 built-in games, however be warned only 7 of those titles are proper Sega games. The other 20 are just mini games. Sneaky, sneaky. 2008 marked the end of the Master System 3 collection range and a birth of a system simply titled the Master System 3. The very subject of this video. See, I told you this story is very confusing and this video is not even over yet. The Master System 3 features a radically changed design, ditching the traditional Master System 2 shape for a brand new design altogether. The system, which features no cartridge slots, reportedly has the same system menu and game list as the final variant of the Master System 3 collection console, which featured 131 games. The six button Mega Drive pad featuring redundant buttons also made a pointless return too, so yay, I guess. The next chapter of Master System history would take place in 2009 with the release of a console known as the Master System Evolution. Hilariously, not much evolution took place at all here. And the console was nearly the same as the Master System 3. The only changes I can tell is that Altered Beast was added to the game lineup and the Sonic design atop the device was changed. Finally, in 2011, a Chris Chan Blue variant of the Master System Evolution was released, once again featuring a different Sonic design. Now to give this video, in my opinion, the coolest ending ever, the Sega Master System Evolution is still being manufactured over an entire decade later, with the platform currently being in stock on the Tech Toy official website.
hilariously meaning that an entire 37 years after the Sega Master System's initial release, Sega Master Systems, or at least variants of them, are still being manufactured and released in an official capacity. Does this technically mean then that Sega has never left the hardware market if one of their distributors is still going strong? In my opinion, it's amusing that this is up for debate. Anyway, since these are in stock, I guess it would only make sense to order one myself. But I think I'll check what the import tariffs are first. So I am Lady Decade and that was the story of the Sega Master System 3 and more, including a pink console just for girls. So if you enjoyed this video, then I have made a video previously about the Sega Mega Drive 4 in Brazil, as well as loads of videos about loads of Sega peripherals and loads of other nonsense. I did a video last week about an isolation room that Sega got in trouble over. You may very well want to watch that as well. And as you know, at the ends of my videos, I like to answer questions from my patrons. So today's question is from House of the Ted. And basically he asks, is there a game that you loved as a child that you now don't like? By phone. Well, for me, I can't think of any video, well, any games, sorry, that I loved as a child that I don't like now, but I can think of a game, which I've talked about before, which I loved as a child, but for whatever reason, I can't play it. I find it really difficult, yet I completed it as a child, which is Croc. I literally loved that game. I played it to death and I completely finished it now, no, can't do it. The tank controls I find really difficult and I just, I can't even do the simplest of jumps. I find it really difficult. That's it basically. So I hope you're happy with the answer of that question. I'd love to hear in the comments section if you have any games that you had total nostalgia goggles for that are working out to be too difficult to play now or that you just don't like as an adult and if you would like your question answered at the end of one of my videos then please become a supporter over on patreon thank you very much and i shall see you all in the next video